In this video, I talk to you guys about why we need the vector components. Whenever we have a vector in two dimension, x-axis, y-axis, there is a vector with an angle, why we need to worry about finding the x component, y component in different scenarios, okay? So as you move through the semester, you will get through the examples problems. Soon we will get through these projectile motion problems. Or after halfway through the semester, we will get to the problems related to the Newton's laws of motion. A force is applied with an angle. So this is why we need, as you can see right here, velocity vector with an angle. A force vector, force is a vector with an angle. This is why we need to learn how to get the x component, y component, I explain in the next few minutes in this video. So this is one example. It says there is a projectile with an angle theta measured from the horizontal axis with an initial velocity v naught, and when you project it, it will go this parabolic motion. Problem could ask what is the range, the horizontal distance, as and also what is the maximum height? And this is a scenario similar to what we discussed in the classroom with a positive angle theta. Here is a vector. We can find the x component of the vector A, y component of the vector A using the trig relationships. When we have a projectile motion problem similar to this one, when it says they are saying there is a projectile launched from the ground level with an initial velocity v naught and with an angle theta measured from the horizontal. So when this is launched, this projectile will go a parabolic motion a shape. So one of the questions open time, you will see the problem asks how far it will travel along the horizontal direction. Most of the time you will see the range, capital R. Sometimes it will ask for what is the maximum height a projectile which reach will reach H. So do this as you can see right here the horizontal motion. To find the R, you have to consider things, apply kinematics equations, constant acceleration motion equations along the X direction. And in order to find the height, maximum height it reach, you have to apply the motion equations along the Y direction, X and Y. So, for this problem, I have the x direction, y direction vertically up. And you can see the velocity vector is in two dimension. It is not either in x only or y only direction. In order to apply, along, apply motion equations along the x direction, I need to have what is the velocity initial v initial along the x direction, what is the initial velocity along the y direction? This is why we need the vector components, in this case, the velocity vector components along the x direction, along the y direction. So in this scenario, we have an initial velocity. When we have a project in this type of a situation, when you have, this is the initial velocity V node with an angle theta, as you have seen inside the class, we can talk about the X component and the Y component. From this triangle right here, this is going to be your V initial X component. This is just basic trig relationships. When you have this velocity vector V node, in order to get the x component, this leg right here, you have to go towards right here, given angle theta towards that direction. It is going to be the magnitude of the given velocity v naught times the cosine 
angle. There we go. As an example, if we have the velocity 30 meters per second times the cosine, let's say as an example, 25 degrees, you have the initial velocity component. Really easy to apply motion equations from now on. To get the y component right here, you have seen this in class. To get the y component, this is going to be your y component, v initial y. Same as this guy right here, v initial y. This is nothing but in order to get the y component right here, you have to go this direction. Angle theta given here, but you have to go away. That is where the sine components come in. V initial y is given V naught times the sine angle theta. Example, we had 30 meters per second times sine angle of the given angle 25 degrees. Really easy. You could apply motion equations along the x direction, along the y direction. Done. In this so this is another example. Whenever this type of a problem is, there are similar situation, but now it is a force with an angle. And the process will be the same, finding the X components, finding the Y components of the force applied. Similar to this one, not always positive angles. Similar to this force example, the angle is a negative one. In this type of examples, the problem might say there's a box sitting on the horizontal table and a team or could be one person applying a force. In this situation, force is F, we could say, or F team. And as of this problem, this force is applied below the horizontal angle theta is given right here. And if I pick my X and Y coordinate, let me say horizontally forward is my X direction, vertically up is my Y direction. And you will eventually label all the other forces, force of gravity equal to M times G and the normal force by the surface acting on this object F normal. We don't know yet these concepts, but soon we will discuss Newton's laws of motion. And whenever we do this, in order to find the unknowns, this is the applied force, if applied, let's say, the steps you will do, you are going to apply F equals MA, the net force along the X direction equals mass times accelerations along the acceleration along the X direction. The other step, you will do the same along the y direction if net equals mass times the acceleration along the x direction, acceleration along the x direction, net force along the y direction, acceleration along the y direction. This will help us find the unknowns as depending on the problem says. But as you can see right here, the force is no longer in the x or y direction. It is in two dimensions. This is where we need the vector vector components. We need to find what is the force component if applied x. We need the force component, even though it is along the negative y direction, if applied y. What is that? So this is where why we talk about out forces, vectors, velocities, vector components. I have a force right here, if applied. I have the angle theta down here. I need the force components. I need my x component right here. In order to do that, you have to go towards the given angle. This is where if applied x component equals the given force applied times the cosine angle, cosine theta, when you go this direction towards the angle given. In order to get the y component, if applied y component, 
this is the given angle theta but you have to go this way this is where the sine component comes in if applied sine theta no matter how big is the force 10 newtons 20 newtons the angle 25 degrees 10 degrees whatever this is all you need to remember 